Hey everybody, Tag Life Done Free. Hey, tonight um, I get the special honor of sitting down and visiting with American Roots Homestead. Uh, this is the channel that I follow. Uh, you know, they're a small, young channel, um, but they have absolutely taken a stand and they are absolutely holding the line. And so I've looked forward to this for a while. Uh, if you're interested in meeting the American Roots and you're interested in uh, listening to a conversation about standing tall and, and you know holding the line and doing for yourself, come on, just check it out. So, Jess and Joe, yeah. so te can you tell me why it is you chose to live this life? Why, why are you guys looking for freedom? What does it matter? Um, for me, it's what can I do to help? What can I do to help my daughter? That, that's my investment in an eternity. So what, what, what kind of legacy am I going to leave? Um, what, what, you know, both of our families, you know, we don't have any royalty in our family or anything. Mm -hmm. you know, fancy like that, nobody famous. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's what, what can we leave? You know, what can we make better and what can we leave? Um, to me, that's, that's kind of the pursuit of happiness and freedom is, is what is, what is our goal? What is our mark? I'm, I'm, I'm a, a believer that I've already stepped into eternity. So this isn't it. This, this isn't as good as it gets, you know, um, but I think there's a reason that we're here. There's a reason I'm in Arizona, not Maine, not in Indiana, not in Ohio, not in Georgia, not in Wisconsin, not in New Hampshire. These are all the places I've lived before. And, mm -hmm. and to me, I, I really think it's one, roots, right? You gotta, you gotta have roots. Roots are important. Um, I've, I've been a nomad my whole life. I've never had roots. And, but I understand with a daughter, um, even though she, you know, she's older now, um, those roots are still important. And, and how do you, how do you do that? But by being free with, with your land, by learning permaculture, by learning uh, community, by learning, um, you know, different skill sets, what is it that, that I can do to help? And, and how can I raise my, my daughter so that she is in that same mindset, like to be a helper? Um, you know, when you, when you see, tragedies and things going on you know and a lot of people are looking at you know rubber neck in the wreck but i always try to teach her looking for the helpers you know who's who's in there helping that's that's what you gotta look at um and and i think with what you guys are doing is is amazing because you're kind of gathering all those skill sets together mm -hmm. um you know i i don't know how to cook um i i can't I can read directions on a box and in 50% of the time it might be okay. Most of the time it's burnt to a crisp. Um, she's an artist when it comes to food. She really has a gift. Um, you can give her anything and she'll be like, oh, it's just something I whipped up. And it's like, this is like some kind of French amazing cuisine from, you know, and she's like, oh no, it's just, you know, I don't know, chili. <laughs> But, but if you can grow those ingredients and have freedom from doing that and not buying them at the grocery store, you know, I'm learning about this dirty dozen about the tomatoes that you buy. And, the, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, how am I just learning about this? They didn't talk about that in culinary school. You know, they didn't want to let you even know about that. And the garden was a two by four raised bed garden for basil. That was our garden in culinary school. I'm like, we could have learned so much more. The freedom of skill set that you have is why I really was drawn to it. What can we pass down to our family, you know, besides debt? Right, right, right. right. You know, and I've, I've watched every one of your guys' videos. And um, for those of you guys out there who haven't, go check out American Roots. And I'm going to tell you all the reasons why as we go along tonight. Um, but I guess, Joe, question to you is, how are you not 300 pounds? Um, everybody asks me that. Um, they, a lot of people say they don't trust the skinny chef. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I've had, I have a high metabolism and I, 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 I'm just go, go, go. And so I can eat anything. I can, I can drink anything and eat anything. And, I, and it's hard for me to gain weight. Um, I'm, I'm, my goal is to be 200 pounds, uh, by uh, Christmas time, which is about 25 pounds. So we'll see. 
I, I started getting fit again. And that's something we were actually talking about was, you know, because part of this is being fit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you, you know, when you're outside working and getting on the roof and, you know, putting stuff up, you, you got to be fit. Just a bale of hay. I went to go buy a bale of hay from Tractor Supply. When I went to get it out of the truck, I'm like, I've got to get to the gym. It's one thing to be, you know, not have a lot of fat. I, I lost 90 pounds on keto about four years ago, yeah. uh, four and a half years ago, and have been able to keep it off. And that was she a was, lot. I look like my, I ate myself. She was my chubby bunny. <laughs> and so to, to have not, you know, that really opened my eyes to what I was putting in my body. Yeah. I think that um, having that much weight, I lost my restaurant. I lost, you know, we left in Maine and had to move back to Arizona and I, I ate depression. my emotions because yeah. I was depressed and I gained so much weight that when I tried to get fit, it was like, oh my gosh, the food wasn't even healthy. The health food wasn't even healthy. And so, you know, keto was just about no sugar, low carb. Yeah. And I really was able to high fat. And then I started learning about real food. It was so hard for me. It was, I, a, it was a big process. And then he lost even more weight oh, and he yeah. had to stop, yeah. you know, so keto. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, <laughs> I, I don't know what I would do without chocolate milk. Right. I mean, if the end of the world ever comes, this is the thing that I will miss the absolute most. You know? I've got you covered. Ty. <laughs> yeah. you got <laughs> I've got something in the works for you it's for 25 yeah. years, 25 years. worth. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah. guys, well, let's talk a little bit about what, what caused you guys to say, hey, we've got to take control of our own lives. We got to do more. Was there an event or was it something that was just bred into you early? Was it, you know, because like for B, for an example, you know, Sandy Hook was a big deal to her. Okay. She was always on board. But that moment is where this, the light clicked on and and mm -hmm. she's the driving force now. Um, but yeah. was there a moment for you guys or was there something that caused you guys to say, hey, man, I'm, I just need to do something? I think when we bought our own piece of property, we'd always rented houses. And when you move all the time, you don't really get a place of like, we could change the backyard or, you know, like the pantry I showed in the video, Joe built that pantry. That was a wall. And he turned my closet in the other room into part of the pantry, framed it in. We bought a door and now I have a pantry. Mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't here before. I don't know what these people did in the house before with no pantry, but it's that kind of thing where you just start to realize like we've always been very um able uh, if a project came along like we could remodel our house so we don't know how to tile we'll watch a video we'll figure it out we'll practice on a small space and then do a larger space we've always taken on any challenge and i think um it's not necessarily covid because when we bought this house we started immediately building garden beds yeah. And I have a video I'm trying to do a voiceover for so I can explain what our backyard looked like. It was dirt. It was straight dirt. And we have transformed it to the only green yard in the neighborhood. And, you know, to have food come out of that, I realized that's power in our own hands. You know, and then when grocery stores started running that stuff and Willie Nelson had that song, Turn Off the TV and Start a Garden. I'm like, we were already doing that. This is great. We're already on the right track. But it just started having that land ownership, a little piece of property you could change. And I said, I want more. And we were like, we can't do more if we can't even manage what we have. Right. Yeah, and I remember that, that really... conversation. That was a good one, too, because, yeah, we were like, hey, you know, 10 acres would be great, but let's start with the 800 you know... square feet we've got back here. Right. Let's start with the 800 <laughs> square feet. Now grow that to you know see if, if we can handle 10 acres or, yeah, or so, more so you guys are telling me that you shouldn't grow more than you can handle well <laughs> no because help is on the way that's right don't help. you worry girl yeah help, help is on the way we're, we're, you know yeah. like wouldn't it just be fun to be like today we're going over there tomorrow yeah. she's coming over here yeah. <laughs> You know, I tell yeah. B all the time, I'm, I'm kind of hard to live with that way because I'm very regimented. I just am naturally that way. You know, like to me, everything's a mathematical equation, everything. Okay. And yeah. if you plant this many, this is how much time it takes. This is how, I mean, it's just the, you know, so I always warn B, don't get into more of it than you can bite, I'll bite off. And she is the, you know how, like when you go into a grocery store and your stomach's, you know, bigger, your eyes are bigger than your stomach or whatever they say that, you know, yeah. that's my wife when it comes to gardening. Her eyes are this big. 
And then, you know, we get up there and there's 250 tomato plants producing 35 pounds of tomatoes a day. And awesome. she, you know, she's like, well, I wonder how I'm going to get all this, part, you know, preserved. <laughs> what are you asking me for? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That amazing kitchen you have. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, I think that's neat. I know that, um, B, you had a question about garlic, right? Oh, no. So the video that you were making the biscuits, it like cut out. And so I saw the garlic cut. I saw the oil drizzled and then it went to smashing it up. And I was like, how did it even get cooked? Where, what what happened? Would you put it in? Oh, you, oh, okay. So yeah, I didn't put really. it in the oven, you're saying. Oh, I, I don't know. I put it in the oven on like 450 degrees or something. And then I pulled it out and smashed it with my knife and it like pops the cloves out. And then I was, yeah. yeah so that's so how you it put it in the oven. Yeah, I just put it in the oven. Sorry, I didn't and show then that. The mm -hmm. masher thing. So yeah. my mom had one of those growing up. We never knew what that was for. Is that only for dough? Because it the it's not flat on the bottom. They're like they're like yeah, right for like cutting in butter into dough. Yeah, I've always just it's like a butter cutter. I've I can't I'm like I've tried to do forks and all of that, but I've used that that it's like a butter cutter pastry. I don't know the exact so term. When, for, when she was doing pastries, B. Yes. I, when she was doing pastries in, in school, I always, I asked her, it can't be that hard to make fresh pastries every morning. And he goes, I don't think it's too much to ask for fresh croissants every morning. And croissants are like a day's process because you fold in the butter, let it sit, bring it back the next day, fold in more butter. And I'm like, I told my chef that. And he says, well, you tell your husband, I don't think a Rolls Royce in the driveway is too much to ask for either. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, fresh croissants every day. But yeah, you know, um, that kind of brings to another point is that, you know, I've acquired these degrees, you know, living in this society thinking, oh, what am I good at? I've always, I didn't go to college for 10 years, raised our kids and then was like, what am I good at? Oh, I want to go to school. I got a degree in art, like general arts. I upholstered things. I did ceramics. I did music recording. I mean, I did everything in college that you could possibly explore. <laughs> and so I can reupholster a couch like nobody's business. I can, you know, so I just started acquiring these skills. And then I went to culinary school and we started a restaurant and got to see that that was the hardest work in our lives with, I think, 1% profit margin. There's no profit margin <laughs> in the food industry, zero. And so that's where we really started talking about, like, wouldn't it be amazing to have a, like a, a real farm to table mm -hmm. restaurant where you opened your barn to your community, yeah. you know, like, and not have it like a restaurant every single day, but like that Friday night, that barn opened and the community could come have smoked prime rib. Yeah. and all gather together like it just warmed my heart and then what if we could teach our kids to cook from really gardening and growing and so having an education degree you know all of this I'm like where can you put all of this well we could teach our kids these skills and pass this generation on again like Joe said that legacy you know yeah we just recently had uh, 75 people out of the house and we uh, roasted an entire pig and awesome. um, everybody brought a side dish yeah. and um, I don't show this on TV much or not, but I have my own range. Awesome. And so we just shot and uh, yeah. ate lots of food and roasted a pig and uh, I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, just a complete, you know, 70 people community potluck yeah. roasting pig. It was, and then all of the pig that was left over, Angela from uh, Grumpy Acres took home and freeze dried it. Awesome. And I, yep. And I have it all in bags that then we're going to give back to all those people at the camp. Out. Neat. Man, that's how awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, it's super cool. I'm yeah. not excited about it. You well, definitely you're... have this magnetic effect. I mean, I'm yeah. I'm drawn to what you have going on. It's so it's so like minded to it just is. yoke up with people that want to be family and community oriented my first thing is where are we going to put the range <laughs> <laughs> right that's, that's like right. zone four according to the permaculture <laughs> zone yeah, one, it's like zone two, four three, we need yeah. zero first we need zero <laughs> billy if you're listening i am going for zero <laughs> yeah we didn't get to the range right away but um we uh 
I don't know if you guys have ever watched like Spags from Spags Unfiltered or Data from Going Deep with Data. Any of those guys, they all yeah, came out yeah. um, to install the wow. range. We built the range as a, as a community. Yeah, neat. What a fun time. Yeah. Oh, man. yeah. It's cool, man. I can, whenever I want, I can just walk right. It's right there. I can just walk right over there and that's all I want, you know? Well, my next vacation <clears throat> is Kansas. Yeah. Guys, it's a beautiful <laughs> place. It's an absolute beautiful place and it's got great people. Um, it's slow. We don't have a lot of exciting things that go on here. But well, tell me more about this 20 degrees, this negative 20 for oh yeah, she's a little worried about the cold. <laughs> Maine is the coldest place that you can get to before you get to Canada. Like, let's be real. You know, I, we saw 96 inches of snow our first year in Maine. Yeah, not here. We oh. probably on an average year, we probably get a foot and a half of snow total all year long. No, that's not bad at all. Okay. Yeah. I'm we listening. Get, yeah, we get okay. ice storms though. You know, the, you'll get a quarter inch of ice on all the trees. Um, but yeah. there's usually one week out of the year, and it's usually right at the end of January, 1st of February, where we'll have just this one horrible week of minus 12, oh. minus 18, minus 20. It's a sure. week. That's not bad. Yeah, but typically, <laughs> we don't get our first snow typically till November, sometimes not even until December, and we're planting by the 1st of March. Do you guys, I saw you have chickens. Do you guys have any other animals? Yes, yeah, so we own sheep. We own pig and we own cows. Awesome. Sweet. So we kind of do that as a community too. So like, for example, the cows um, next to me is another farm, very like-minded guy that we do a lot of stuff together. And so we went in and bought the herd of cows. So on my actual property, I have no cows. Okay. Okay. But I own half of that one and half of that one and a quarter of that one. And you know, <laughs> that kind of yeah. stuff for, yeah. in reference to the cows. I think my cousin's doing something similar in Tennessee. Yeah. He just he just got a bunch of cattle, but some are his, some aren't. I don't yeah. know how that works. So yeah. do you have dairy, or are they just are they just meat cows? There, there are dairy. There are dairy. There's there's dairy, one dairy cow over there, and the rest of them will be meat cows. Yeah. Nice, That's awesome. Is there a baby dairy yeah. too? Yeah. Uh, Jersey, awesome. It's hard to I, keep up with them. I didn't mean to be nosy. I just oh. have, I saw the chicken coop and I was all excited. Animals are like something I'm super passionate about. My parents don't think that they can do animals. And I said, don't worry, you handle the mechanics, you handle the preserving, I'll handle the yes. animals. You know, if everybody has a job, I think that's another important point. Yeah. Um, you made that point when B had to go get the fish. And we've really been trying, like I started making spreadsheets so that if anything was ever to happen to me, he would know. Yeah how to pay the bills who do i even what website do i go to i have it all in my book and i know what i'm doing what's the password right <laughs> uh, what's the secret question they're asking for you yeah. know we take care of a lot of things when we write the checks yeah you know what i mean like it's yes. we're, a, we're a team we do yeah. everything as one but there are just some things that i do and some things he yeah. does yeah you know and, and so that really brought that to light because we've really started taking on the garden more together mm -hmm. where he would build the bed. Now I'm more like, let me see the screw gun. You know, yeah. my dad's a carpenter. I can do this. I, you yeah. know, you are how much you push yourself to be, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so that was something too, that I really noticed yeah. when yeah, you we, have your own land, you can start to build. Yep. And we do a lot of that stuff together. You know, I'm a, one of my, my absolute proudest moment of our entire process of building this homestead is seeing my wife three stories off the ground, putting the last couple rocks on the fireplace. I'm That's telling nice. you, that is, I'm yeah. amazed all the time. I joke a lot because she's on vacation all the time and that kind of stuff. But the truth is, yeah. she, there was a time in the room that I'm standing, sitting in right here in my office, I'm three stories off the ground and I'm surrounded by 12 windows. I can see my entire property. We call it the crow's nest. Yeah. yeah. Um, but when we were standing these walls up here, the and I'll let you, you tell the story. I cried. Oh man. Because <laughs> the right, wall... it was very because you were high off the ground and it was scary. <laughs> um, because well, yeah. so the wind was blowing twenty miles an hour, and we're standing this wall, which so just the, the two of you. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's... So the the <laughs> east and the west wall are brought in from the from the edges i guess right yeah. okay. but the side the side walls are right at the edge so oh. you, there's no <laughs> no it, it, it makes me I'm, sick even thinking about it i was like what I, what happens if i can't hold it he's like hold it and i said what happens if i can't and he says 
hold it. <laughs> what what are you there is no there's no other option. Just hold yeah. it. Right. There's no other so option. You find it from somewhere to hold it. <laughs> right. Wow. So I I I was crying because like there's no there's no there's no um chance for error, you know. Yeah. The wind blows one gush gush and yeah. it, mm. it's gone, you know. Yeah. They're whoop, gone. Yeah. So yeah. the whole wall. Man. So I cried. <laughs> well it just builds appreciation for your property mm -hmm. oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just like the it's fish amazing. you talked about the fish and we can yeah. go down there now and i'm like yeah those are my fish right those are all <laughs> my fish i put them in there they're mine that's right one by <laughs> one she actually goes i'm gonna we're gonna post a video pretty quick she actually goes down and feeds them now and so she'll throw the fish on top of the water standing on the dock and they all just come up and eat and there's some of them now that are 10 inches long and they all just come up and eat. What's that? Have you named any of them? <laughs> I've named all of them. Yeah. Awesome. That's 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 why they're yours. Joel Salatin <laughs> says you're not supposed to name your food. Name <laughs> <laughs> them delicious. That's funny. We we had lobsters at one time in our living room. Um, it was a little lobster. It was called Phoenix Lobster Company, and we actually were trying. We were getting lobsters from Maine, and we were trying to sell them here. Um, and we named him. We, we had, had a hundred gallon holding um, tank in our living room with, where with live lobsters yeah, from eight, Maine. We would import them lobster. in, purge <laughs> them into the saltwater tank. And then if you guys wanted them and you lived locally, you could order them from us and the, we would take them to you. Fresh live Maine lobster. You would the point of that, that was we named them Larry. <laughs> we had Barnacle Bill. We had, yeah, we had. And they had lobster fights. It was pretty cool. And if one died, we got lobster. It would be yeah. two o'clock in the morning in my bathrobe cooking lobster. Yeah. You, know? yeah. you can still eat them if they die. Hi, Larry. <laughs> You're floating nice today. Your right. color's good. You're blushing. <laughs> What's that? You're whistling at me? <laughs> uh, oh my God, you guys are nuts. <laughs> Yeah. I love it. We've got it all. <laughs> no, it's it's good. Well, guys, let's talk about what your goals are. What's coming for you guys? What's the future look like? Well, in the next year, we've put a, a deadline on it just because I'm a teacher. Um, we've got things going on and I have to sign a contract every year. And I said, I, I just know I want to live free. And I feel <laughs> like the clock is ticking. Let's yeah. not let's not beat around the bush. And I feel like we should have, would have, could have. But now here's what we have. And so we've made a plan to be debt free this year mm -hmm. and to work really, really hard to find a piece of property that we can homestead with our parents mm -hmm. and, and whatever. That's, that's really it. Our, our short term goal right now is is to obtain property. So just to secure where, where it's at. So I think within the next probably four or five months, we'll just keep narrowing it down. Through the threat analysis. Like, I can't um, stress that enough to go back and do that because it's yeah. really made us consider things that we would never have even thought about before. And, and I'd of like course, to hear more about that. If you guys will talk about that and you, your guys is probably, no, don't, don't give any specifics away, right? Don't do anything you're not comfortable sure. but, but talk about, because a lot of people, whoa, sorry, we turned the light on. It's getting dark outside. I just, yeah, I noticed okay. our sun's yeah. going down too. <laughs> yeah, we were getting darker and darker and darker. <laughs> um, but I would be, I think people would be interested to hear about. The, what is a needs and threat analysis? And okay. How, how did you guys go about it? And what are some of the things that maybe you guys considered that you're willing to share? I think that'd be helpful. Yeah, yeah no, no doubt. We can definitely do that. I think as we go through it, obviously. Um, well, first we watched your video yeah. to find out what it was and why we needed it mm -hmm. and how it could help us. And you kind of gave a generic scenario, which I took notes through the yeah. entire time. Um, and really I really good video. And I started to compare what if what is my scenario? What does that look like? What are the things that are important to us? Where do we want to be? How far from a city? How far from those borders? Mm -hmm. How far from another country border? From another state border? It wasn't just a border, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it was thinking logistically, like you know, we've lived in Maine where we were thirty minutes down the peninsula from the nearest like highway. You took the highway, you know, the little two lane highway to the nearest highway. We knew Walmart was 35 minutes away on a good day with no snow. 
So we know what it's like to live away from something. And if something happens, you get creative on how you can make sour cream. Mm -hmm. So that threat analysis was like, what are you preparing for? What do you want to see in your future? How far away do you want to be from people? There's a ton of unknown unknowns um, that that happen along that planning process that just come out and you're like, oh man, I didn't even think of that. Never heard of that. Um, but I, I think most importantly for me anyway, is, is I pray about it. Um, you know, I, I know in, in my life, my steps are directed and, and, and things happen. So everywhere it goes, it's blessed and, and it works. Um, it, it doesn't seem that way. And that's why everybody's like, man, you're really high risk. Yeah. Cause it's, it's going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's it. It's, it's when, and when you speak it out, it, it comes, it, you know, it becomes tangible. And so, um, yeah, I, I think our whole process right now is really just, um, staying focused. Uh, our, our daughter, that's, that's one thing that that's kind of, you know, she's on board. Um, but she's also got her own career now. Yep. Um, so, and, and we're very tight, we're very tight family. Um, so it's always, we are very close. Her career, she can move her career. I mean, she, she, she's a hairstylist and she's a phenomenal hairstylist. Um, and she makes a really good living doing it. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of, of people that need their hair done. Homestead the farm. honeys that need yeah, their hair done. Some homestead honeys. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, at that age, I don't think she's seeing the vision we're seeing. Mm-hmm. And that has to be a threat, part of that threat analysis. Sure. What does our daughter, it's our only child. My whole point is to protect her, protect, you know, Jessica. And and, uh, and if she wants to stay, how do we leave when yeah. we are so tight, right. you know? Right. And I mean, that's really something that it, we're considering. Um, plus, because also I feel like, okay, you want to stay. We'll go prepare that place for you then. Mm-hmm. Because there will be a time Mm -hmm. and I want to pass this legacy down to my grandchildren. You know, I want them to say, man, I'm so thankful that my grandparents saw what was coming and needed to start raising their own animals and could pass these skills down. My mom tells us all the time. I can't even imagine why I let these skills slip through my fingers with my great grandmother and grandmother doing these things. And I just didn't even think about it, and you know, planting if, the garlic next to the strawberries or whatever it is, you know, things stay on the same trajectory that they're on now. Uh, the cities aren't going to be the place you want to be. Mm-hmm. Right. For sure. And, and I, I think there's, there'll also be a lot of people as well, tr- uh, you know, trying to make that move maybe for the wrong reasons mm-hmm. um, or whatnot. Um, but and I'm not looking to move again. I'm looking to build a homestead for the long haul. And that's really important in the threat analysis is where do you see yourself being? You know, we, we said um, that we were, we were thinking of certain places and hadn't quite nailed those down. Well, we definitely need to go get boots on the ground. You cannot make a decision by looking at a video online and thinking, Oh, but that just looks so gorgeous. And I'll say this too. You need absolutely need to go at the winter time these harsh, harsher climate times. If you're not from there, we're from Arizona. We can garden all year long. Yeah. There is no real frost that you're worried about. No if there is, you cover it with a sheet and you wait, yeah. you know, okay. like, yeah, we're good. Like <laughs> my lilies are already coming up right now. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's, it's crazy. The things that are happening in the garden in Arizona that wouldn't be happening in certain places. So if you're really serious, you need to consider how you grow food, what kind of food you want to eat, it, what area when we moved to Maine, they didn't eat the same things that we ate. McDonald's carried lobster rolls, right? Never had a McDonald's carry a lobster roll. I couldn't find good Mexican food anywhere, anywhere, <laughs> you know, here it's on every corner. You know? right. it. So it's just considering those things that are important to you. You know, when we were in Maine, New Year's Eve, what do you guys want? And we couldn't go anywhere snowed in. They said, we want Mexican food. We did a full on Mexican spread oh, in the so restaurant. Good. They're so good. You know, because that was what we missed and yeah. chilies. A can of green chilies were $2 a can there. We pay 79 cents a can for green chilies here. And that's if you don't grow them and can them yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I I was going to tell you that, you know, uh, B is from Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she told me in in one of your videos that um, she is amazed that you can keep that garden green like you can down there. (laughs) (laughs) We, our our yard was just dirt growing. Yeah. Yeah. We had a little bit of grass, but not. 
Yeah. The clover has helped, but we've gotten so much rain. This crabgrass is growing back. But my biggest thing is feeding it and trying to offer shade. You know, we have these like surrounding trees with the sun goes down in the hot areas. It kind of cools the area. And we put the greenhouse in the area that really nothing was really growing. This blackberry bush is touching the greenhouse now. And I'm just like, like you said, B, how do I preserve? We bought a blackberry rake. We had so many blackberries. I'm like, how do I preserve all of these? It's gotten out of control. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's taking this time too, while you're doing that threat analysis to build those skills. Mm -hmm. What can you do while you're waiting right now? I don't have my farm right now, but I'm learning how to perfect tomatoes. What don't you do when you water tomatoes? You don't water the leaves. Thank you. You will disease always, the leaves right in the garden. <laughs> you don't want to leave. Yeah. You can teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. <laughs> My new well, thing is to learn how to tie knots. Yeah. That's what I wanted to tie a lot. Of, you know, if you don't know how to tie a knot, you just tie a bunch of knots, right? Yeah. Jess, <laughs> Jess, what nationality are you, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, my family is from England and Germany. Okay. Because I call her the Mongolian slave, slave driver, you know, in a lot of <laughs> videos. And I think that in English... German slave lord would be an appropriate title. Yeah, I'll, I will own it all day long. <laughs> <laughs> they call him, he won't take me on a construction job because I will drive that job. He says, you make nobody want to work because you Jeez. keep us working. Well, we came to get the job done. Yeah. We're not here to spend five days coming back to it. <laughs> <laughs> she gets it done. Yeah. The foreman. The warden. German English slave driver. Oh, the warden. Day. I like this. I'll He's own that warden. as well. I've been called way worse. <laughs> So you asked my drive to do it. My drive to do it is to be on vacation with B. <laughs> she is always on vacation. Always. It took me a minute to really understand what you meant by that. And then the longer that I started trying to like get closer to this journey of living free and I get ready for work every day. And I realized, like you said, there's no Friday in the homestead. And I was on summer break for three months and I'm like, or two months. And I'm like, there was no Friday in my my process and i'm like i i appreciate that yeah. you know like to me it's like friday just to clock out and not go back but the vacation side is that you never have to clock in You're, right. you work for yourself right. and i'm like i want to yeah. be on vacation with me <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't know this but a lot of people think i'm just giving her a hard time but the truth is we live it at our eden That's right so great right we're always on vacation and i mean it be right. always on vacation. She's doing every day what she wants to do. Right. And I love that. Yeah. That is good. And I probably shouldn't have said that here on video because now everyone, my story will be out. <laughs> That's okay. Really just torturing her. <laughs> you do torture. You blew, you blew your cover, man. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I actually go out of my way to find her in the worst possible positions possible. You know, up in a ladder, <laughs> holding something, laying on a roof. Like I go out of my way. Oh, look at her over there. Oh, I go get the camera. You know, <laughs> you can tell by the way she looks over her shoulder when she knows you're coming. <laughs> She's like, what am I supposed to expect right now? How do I react? <laughs> yeah. and I love the way you ask these obvious questions, too. Like, what are you doing with those screws? <laughs> well, I'm screwing down the roofing. Why do you have an extra gun? Because that was yours and you're not here anymore. <laughs> you're bothering me with the camera. <laughs> it's just a great banter that makes it very, very enjoyable. You it know, is. we go back. We haven't watched every video. Video, but we definitely i'm always going back and joe will ask is this a new one or an old one <laughs> so we know which time frame we're talking yeah, in yeah. you know because so many things have happened over the course of your channel as well yeah. Yeah. and oh, what yeah. you guys have done and so it's fun to see how you guys have come along as well you know so inspiration to inspiration i guess right yeah we're growing every day you know i don't yeah. when i started this process i didn't know anything about solar yeah mm -hmm. you know if you'd have told me hey i need a uh a water system that allows three different sources of water to go to every single faucet, every single toilet, you know, to be able to control them individually. I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. I had to, you know, I'm a, Joe, I'm a lot like you and, and that I'm just enough handy to be dangerous in my opinion. Yeah. And yeah. I just figured it out, you know, and, and uh, oh, by the way, I wanted to tell you something. Um, I watched your pantry video and nice cuts. Thanks. Appreciate that. You know, <laughs> I really appreciate it. Someone that. who cuts a lot, right? Yeah, absolutely. Nice cuts, like, they say the testament to a carpenter is how well their door hangs. Yeah. They do. Yeah, it's true. You know, because yeah. doors can be tricky. 
they can they are yeah a, yeah yeah that's good i appreciate that good. thank that, you i'm very good. amateur so thank you well my dad taught him how to hang a door when we lived in maine and he'll tell yeah. you that my dad taught me you know your dad taught me how to hang a door and so when we took this project on he said if i had not worked with your dad yeah. mm -hmm. you know everything leads you to something else like mm -hmm. i had heard jason from so the land said never say no to an opportunity if That's someone right. asks you will you do this always do say it. yes because you never know what you can learn okay. and while that wasn't a career in carpentry he took a job working for my dad and learned how to hang a door he's built a deck two three decks he's built a One couple bed. different decks movie um yeah movie theater he's put on you know and so that allows you to build those skills like you said you didn't start out knowing solar no. but no but it's been you read a lot of books you read a lot of books tag um i don't i don't necessarily read a lot of like paper books but i do a lot of yeah. research so i, I read okay. a, lot, a lot of like research papers right um right you you won't catch me reading a story a fanny a, like a, a fantasy type story sure no yeah but what you'll catch me absolutely doing is trying to figure out what's the exact perfect habitat for a black crappie awesome like that kind of stuff you know or yeah how do sure. i support this just right or how do i get this pump to work just right or whatever right. You know? yeah That's i read good. that stuff constantly yeah what's your favorite like how-to book oh my oh. goodness how-to book um, well, if I had to sum it all up there, James Wesley Rawls wrote a book called how to survive the end of the world. Mm. And, and this is an old book, but yeah. it's a big book, um, that really goes through a lot of the different layers of being prepared. Wow. And so I think it's a good and comforting book, but you know, most of the time, it's not really a book that I'm reading. It's a article. Sure. You know what I mean, that someone wrote about, you know, whether it be solar or like, I didn't know when I went into solar, if somebody yeah. would have told me, tag, look, here's the deal. Your panels are nothing more than a charger. The more yeah. panels you have, the faster it charges. Your batteries are really no more than how many days do you want to go without sun? The more batteries you have, the more days you can go. The inverters are really nothing more than how much power you send into the house. If someone right. had just told me that. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Right. Right. <laughs> you know? I didn't know all that, you know, I had to go, yeah. and go, oh man, this is not at all as complicated as people make it out to be. Yeah. Do you have any electrical background? Nope. No. Nope. When I was a young man, no. <laughs> when I was a young man, my parents were gone. I was on my own really, really early. So I've mm -hmm. lived on my own since I was 15. Awesome. And the way I got through high school is I went to an alternative high school. And so I got to go to school from eight o'clock in the morning till noon. And then at noon, I framed houses till okay. I got OK, wow. and that's how I got myself through high school. And so I have enough carpentry skills and enough of that that I was around enough of it. Mm -hmm. I can kind of fake it till you make it my way through yeah. a good chunk of it. Um, but yeah, three, four, five, three, four, five. <laughs> yep. yeah. That's right. And man, just that one principle alone will take you so far. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so yeah. So so basically, I'm just kind of self-taught, but I love it. I, I can't wait to get into some of these projects like a biochar generator right mm. or um put the wind turbine up i'm building i haven't um nobody knows this but i'm in, in my shop right now i'm building bethany a gigantic solar dehydrator big like fun <laughs> yeah so it's got like i don't know seven wow. sh 70 shelves in it i mean it's big mm. and, and so just stuff fun. like that i can't you know i love yeah. doing stuff like that but anyway um Great. yeah so hey guys real quick if what advice are you going to give to somebody who is living in a city, don't even know where to begin, understand that, you know, life's weird and weird days are coming. And mm -hmm. what do you tell them? I mean, how, how do they begin to take control of their lives? Like you guys have, because you guys did the hardest thing. You made the decision and then you right. acted upon the decision. That's yeah. the hardest part. How do they, act, how do they make the decision? How do they act on it? Well, first I would say pray. Mm -hmm. You always want to make sure feelings, feelings are fickle. Yep. And one minute I can be heated up about the election. The next minute I can be, you know, singing praises and bacon bread. And the next minute I can be crying over the dog passing away. You know what I mean? Like feelings are fickle. They come and they go pray about how you feel. And if it's something that keeps coming back at you and coming back at you, you know, you're on the right path. If things start coming in your way, you just put one foot in front of the other and whatever God has for you is exactly what's supposed to be done. And I'll give a good example. You know, we didn't really know where to start and it just started coming to me, get out of debt. 
whatever you do, you do not want to be in debt. I mean, if history repeats itself, just read about the people and what they started doing. And that's one way they can hold you down is that you feel like you cannot walk away from that job or you have no hope because my credit cards and I, you know, I will plug Dave Ramsey till the cows come home, do the envelope system, start taking it serious that your thousand dollar nest egg catapults you to get debt free. Because if you have that thousand dollars, you feel like you can do it. You start with one credit card and no matter where you are, maybe it's just a car loan. For me, it's, you know, this is the part that makes me mad at student debt. I didn't take that on because I wanted anybody else to pay that. Right. And I'm not asking for anybody else to pay that. How do I pay that myself? Right. I want to do that right now. I want to, you know, so how fast can you do that? And we even talked about, I'm a teacher. I don't make very much. Should I go get a second job? I'm exhausted. Yeah. I have 200 kids a day. You know, I, I feel the, the feeling of being hope, feeling hopeless and not knowing where to turn, having debt. So we, and that, we that hits a hard point because most people out there, and especially when you're talking, like at, when I go to work, a lot of people are always asking me, I, I work in a manufacturing facility, but everybody's asking me about housing because everybody is, they can't afford it um, or, or they can't afford to get out of debt. And I keep telling them you can't afford not to, you know, just, you're just going to have to, like you said, you don't, you don't. You don't spend things on things. You don't go to Starbucks, you know, mm -hmm. start with that. But my biggest thing is just uh, don't believe the lie. And I think so many people just believe a lie. Amen. Um, they believe a lie that they can't do it. They believe a lie that it, it's not possible or it's a pipe dream or whatever. And, and you know, what anybody, what, what one man can do, another man can do, you know, and, and so well, I, and we I shop really, in the thrift store. You know, we are yeah, not sh like ashamed that. to say that I have since I was a kid. I yeah. love it. I find better deals. I find better clothes. I find, and you know, I've had people tell me, you look like you're from central Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like a really rich area down mm -hmm. in Phoenix. Like you have the We're million not dollar central homes. Phoenix. I'm not from central <laughs> Phoenix, you know? And it's, it's like, if you knew my outfit cost me seven fifty. you know what I mean? Like I, I'm down with that. I, I think that that's where we have to get to a point as a society is realizing what's the most important thing. And if, if, that is being a part of that that cog of that wheel where you want to pay taxes all in everything you do yeah. your gas you, like you were talking about in your last video tag you know you really want to get to the point where you can think well what can i do in my small space get debt free mm -hmm. get on the same page with your spouse if you're single you know where you're at then pray and get yeah, on the same page yoke up yoke up with like-minded people right you know? build that community find out get on that free setting community website get Most on the definitely. state and start following people in your state yoke up you know, make it a, a morning thing. Read your word, get on your free setting community, <laughs> say good morning, maybe pass a scripture on, Amen. you know, be enlightening to other people. You never know oh, too. Oh. We need this. Yeah. We need this. My day has been long, Yeah. you yeah. know, but I was looking forward to this all day, you yeah. know? Yeah. Amazing. You know, I've always felt that, uh, and I've said this in many of my videos, and this would be some you know, advice that I would give to everybody to ponder and to think and that we've been trained and programmed over all of these years that what the American dream is, is that you go to school, right? You listen to whatever they tell you, you become a good citizen, you go take out debt. And then, and then the quality of what kind of citizen you are is called a credit score, which means how well can you hold on to debt? Mm -hmm. yep. From there you go, you get a 30 year mortgage and then you refinance and you refinance and you refinance through the course of your life. You work 40 years at a company to which at the end you're, gold, you're given a gold watch and you're told to piss off only to then three years later go on social security only to then three years later go to a nursing home and through Medicare st spend down they take all of the savings you ever made in your entire life and I ask you what yep. is the point. Yep. Right. On to I used to say this, there's got to be more than Grand You're Avenue. Right. Grand Avenue Route 66 runs through Arizona <laughs> and it's like the industrial side. And I'm like, we have to drive this every day. Like, what is there's got to be more to life than this? Yeah. You I know? think and the goal of life is to be on vacation. That's yeah. right. That's right. And I think to be in charge of what you do, what you put your hands on, you know. I have the freedom in my classroom, but I'm still told what I teach. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yes, I agreed to it. Yes, mm -hmm. I said I would. But at the same time, you still have somebody to answer to. And I want to answer to myself. My mom has a saying that she heard from somebody that the best day working for yourself 
or the the worst yeah. day working for yourself is better than the best day working for somebody else. And I'm I've always thought about that. Like I just we've we've been driven to be entrepreneurs. People at work will say to Joe, "How what are you doing? Uh, what's your next business that you're not gonna?" Ha-? And it's like we've had quite a few. Business. You never know if you don't try, right? right. And yeah. if everything has taught us something yeah. to keep trying, to keep yeah. trying. And I think with homesteading, we may not have it down right this second, but we have a goal. Put a timeline on it. Yeah. Start to, we we wrote out, what did you call that plan you had me write? Um, oh gosh, now my brain's fogged. A critical path. Mm-hmm. Critical p- path plan something. or critical <laughs> path <remember>. analysis or <laughs> something so that I would have dates on when I wanted to have a certain credit card paid off. Yep. Look at my budget. What can I do? What can we have a yard sale and sell? We have made uh, $800, $3,000 at a yard sale when we sold off our entire house. Yeah. You know, like you can make some money. If, what, what are you serious about doing? Yeah. Get out of debt and then start thinking about where you want to go. What do you want to do? What are you good at? Don't spend this time just getting out of debt start building skills write stuff down have it in front of you, you making know? lists having pictures watch videos keep it in front of your mind yeah. because what you think about what's in your heart is what will be yeah. and so those are the things we don't spend any time watching anything that isn't a sermon that isn't a tag and b tag and b that isn't a gardening <laughs> video it's not we have pimp casts going when we're cleaning so yeah. we don't have to stand and watch the tv we yeah. can keep busy just listen to william you and know? billy I mean, we, we love being connected to a community of like-minded people because it encourages us. And the other thing I would say is disconnect yourself from people that discourage you. Yeah. People who, who can't will always tell you why you can't. Yeah. People who want to keep you down will always tell you why what you're doing is not a good idea, but yet they're doing nothing. Or they're scared. Nothing. Right. They're, they're scared. And fear will drive you too. Yeah. get yourself prepared. Even if you're putting a bag of rice every two weeks away, that's a bag of rice more than you had two weeks ago yeah. you know and so you don't have a freeze dryer find someone who does you hook up with that community and free steading you know we gladly share food with each other we gladly start you know and like we were talking you you said with that um i loved grumpy acres saying that you know we're a constitutional republic we just haven't been one for a while and you're like i don't expect anyone to feed me i don't you know those conversations were happening and i'm like yeah. No, but when you're yoked in with the community, you build a family. Yeah, and, and it's not an expectation. Other. It's not it's it's doing what our founding fathers did and seeing how much our neighbor needs our help. And you know, I feel like our generation hasn't we've lost that because we haven't been through a war. Mm-hmm. We haven't lost our neighbor. We haven't lost our neighbor's friends. These younger kids don't know what it means to sacrifice their dads, their brothers, their uncles, their best friends. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the part that I just think we need to to realize that you only get that through building community, building conversations on front porches, around campfires, at the shooting range. Teach your kids to shoot guns. Teach them gun safety. That's right. You know, we we just started being gun owners in the last two years, yeah. and he was big time against it because we were sold the fear. Yeah. We were told not to have a gun. And I said, you know, I just think it's our right. We need to exercise it. And my mom said, you know, he says, oh, I've got the Lord. And my mom said, even our founding fathers prayed, grabbed their Bibles, grabbed their rifles, and they fought on. And that's exactly what I would say. We've got to be prepared, not in a way to be violent, but a way to fight from tyranny, to keep ourselves free, because freedom is not given to us. We have to fight for it every single day. And that's how we do it. Get out of debt. Pray. Get get yoked up with God. Because at the end of the day, none of this matters except your relationship with him. You know, you can have, if he doesn't bless your homestead, nothing's going to grow. Can I just say that? Of course. I mean, that's your, your Eden is your Eden. You're blessed. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And you know that because he'll bless your steps. Yeah. So I just, you know, I say all of that in love because I'm walking it. I'm, I'm walking the fear every day where we have to be yoked up. We make the same, we make yeah. a decision together. Do you want to buy a bucket and the lid? Yeah, we can go buy a bucket and the lid. Let's pay cash for can it. Can we fill it with bullets? Can we <laughs> fill it with bullets? You know, and what do you spend money on? Ammo right. and food. <laughs> you know, like start putting yourself in the right position and yeah. you'll start to see a change. One one percent a day will will add up to a hundred percent in a hundred days. <laughs> yeah.
You know, uh, Jess and Joe, this is what I love about your guys' channel. This is what I love about you guys. Mm -hmm. right As you know, it's hard to walk the walk. Yeah. It's, it is. It's hard. Yeah. Everything in yeah. front of us puts hurdles for us to actually be able to do it, but you guys are actually doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like you are, you know, have you ever been on that bicycle when you put it on that gear and you're just pedaling as fast, but you're not really going anywhere. I yeah. felt like that. I'm like, I feel like we should be further along than we are. <laughs> don't rush something. Just yeah. sit back. You know, the Bible says, don't be anxious about anything, yeah. but prayer in everything, prayer yeah. and supplication. And I think yeah. that's where we're at is God show us what land we're supposed to be on freesteading. Someone asked me, are you thinking about Texas? We would love to have you. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about wherever God has for us. And you have to be open-minded to that because yeah. then you'll come across great people like yourselves where I don't even know how I came across your channel. I heard hold the line and I've been faithful where you go, I go, <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah. holding that line. Yeah, you yeah. know, we love it. And thank you guys for being who you are and standing yeah. up for, you know, that just that faith and being able to say that hold yeah. the line. Yeah. this is what happened to me yeah. really gave courage to somebody else. And that's the point of our channel. What can somebody who has, a, we live in a townhouse. It's what they call a townhouse. We have a garage and a backyard, yeah. you know, but we have, it's two bedrooms. Yeah. We don't have a large space, yeah. you know? Yeah. And at first you, you want to be like, almost like, Oh, ashamed of that. But then it's like, oh. no, I had somebody contact me and tell me I don't have, I live in an apartment and I don't have an oven. Can I bake bread in that Le Creuset bread oven on my stovetop? Now I'm researching and my mom's like, start experimenting, see what you can <laughs> bake with it. See how you can help this person out. And you see that's community, yeah. you know, that's helping being a, a helper, friend. Being a helper. Yeah. And yeah. you know, that isn't that a cool thing to then teach me something as well. I'm not just teaching, I'm learning, yes. which is what it's all about. I'm not claiming to know everything. I don't know anything. I'm a jack of trade, a jack of all trades, master of nothing. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of live in that boat. I think it's amazing what you guys are doing. And, you know, it's all relative because I can tell you, I feel like I'm not far enough along. I yeah. feel like I could have done more. I feel yeah. like I haven't applied myself enough, you know, and you can ask B. B says the same thing. Like you guys, there's a sign on my rear view mirror of my truck. And I urge everybody to do this. And all it says is, am I proud of what I did today? Uh, mm, that's good. All it says, because I have to look at that every day. Yeah. yeah. And every single day. And, and it kind of drives me. But the truth is, I think it's relative. I don't feel like I've applied myself to 100%. I know that B, sometimes I'll ask her, I'll say, sure. you, you know, well, you're, you're human. human. Yeah. yeah. You know? human. Yeah. And I'll ask B sometimes and I'll say, hey, are you, did you have a productive day? Yeah. And some days she goes, oh, yeah, I got this and this and this and this. And then some days she gives me that look like, don't ask that question today. <laughs> we used to have a similar saying. It was, uh, she would say, I made good use of my time today. And I would Great. say, well, I didn't make so much good use of my time today, but and I you will know, tomorrow. <laughs> we started making lists because I found that yeah. I get a lot of satisfaction and I'm super competitive. I got this, 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 and this done. Oh, See all yes. that I got done? Like I love visual yeah. and then like affirmation that I actually got things done. Well, then my brain would get so full because, you know, let's be real. You're trying to pay bills, keep your job. I'm a teacher. I have to plan lessons and things. I'm planning dinners for my family, planting the garden. What else needs to be? My brain is full. Oh, and then preserving. And then what do you, you know, and it's like, oh my gosh. And then make a video. Mm -hmm. So I started making lists, get it out of your brain, check it all off. And you'd be amazed. Mm -hmm. Like I told my mom, I think we should start selling to-do lists. So people just have one everywhere to do an American roots farm to do list. I'm like, get it done. Yeah. You know, let's be that driving encouragement. You guys, you know, you'd apologize. Sorry. I didn't get back to you. We had two days of work. I'm like, don't apologize. Yeah. We understand. Yeah. I can only imagine how busy I'm going to be. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's a zoo trying to build a house, do a homestead, raise a garden, take care of the animals, pay the bills. <laughs> right. And just all of the things, you know, that go on. But man, it's so exciting. I'm living, I'm living life 100% to my terms. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's encouraging to see. I, I feel like we're light years away, but I think, you know, yeah. back to your point, it, what, what gets measured gets done. Mm -hmm. And so it, if, if, and, and to people that are going to start, you know, just do that. Start measuring um, what you're doing each yeah, day. What is Write it, it down. You're, you know, what are you saving? What are you paying off? What are you, you know, how are you getting unhooked? How are you getting out of the matrix? You know, one thing I'll <laughs> say is like, oh, well, I just, I went and I couldn't help my credit card spending, put it in the safe. 
Yeah. We put the credit cards in the safe. That way they're not even on our person. Yeah. So it's not even a go-to. When we go to somewhere like Costco where we want to buy something in bulk, we take cash. Mm -hmm. So then we're only spending the cash we took. Mm -hmm. You know, these are just little things that you can do. Yeah. That that because otherwise I'm like four hundred dollar store, you know. <laughs> I'm like I just spent all my money at the Costco, you know. And it's, it's like true. man, but then the credit card yeah. bills coming, you know. And that's where you have to just stop doing what they want you to do is yeah. having the latest and greatest. We can get along with the old. Yeah, yeah. Or so. I think what's interesting about that is you accomplish a lot of things by taking the cash. You know, you you starve that bank of that three percent fee on that credit card. Yep. Absolutely. Right. I love that point. Yeah, starves the beast. It and does. you know, I've been that that little man who appreciates cash in your little business. Yeah. yeah. Can I just say that? Not because I want to do any, you know, it's it's just because that fee will drown you after fee and tax and fee and tax. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's nice when someone actually does pay you in cash. Yeah. And we need to get back to that system where we realize that's what's important because if somebody taught me in school about credit and credit debt and what it would do. My daughter does not have a credit card. Mm -hmm. She will not and told us the other day, I won't have a credit card and she's living off the cash that she makes. Mm -hmm. Do you know how unheard of it is that a young in their early twenties doesn't have a credit card? We get offer after offer after offer after offer. I've drilled it into her head. Look at how much it drowns us and weighs us down with monthly payments. If I added up what we paid every month, you could have a harvest right every single other month. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, you know, and so I think that when you realize that moment of truth, you start to, to make a decision that I want to be free. And each day you say it, do something more than you did to be freer today than you did the day before. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I don't know how much better, um, you know, we can end this conversation than that right there. But before we go, I would like to give you both, you know, kind of the final word. And then I've got a couple of things I'd like to say at the end. But um, final words, what would you guys, what do you guys want to say to all the people watching today? Thank you for watching, first of all. <laughs> you know, we're, we're just trying to share our story to give encouragement. And, you know, we couldn't be encouraging if there wasn't people to want to know how to be encouraged. So thank you for being here. Yeah. Um, thank you for taking the time to really just get to know who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to tell your story in a 20 minute video or a 10 minute video or, you know, a three minute clip, but to actually sit down and have a conversation with people like you and B, it's really amazing to get to see it a step further than just an email conversation or passing a message back and forth. Um, so I, it's just, I would encourage anybody that wants to reach out and have these conversations. Like you've said in other videos, if it didn't, if I didn't speak up and say, I'll do a video, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be here right now because you said, Hey, yeah. anyone want to do a video? Yeah. So reach out. Don't be shy. No, you know, that's what I would say. Cause it, it really break that barrier. I said it before Joe's shy. Look at how much we've gotten to know. more. Yeah. Of him. He ain't shy at all. I know. I told you when you get to know him, he'll start talking. You can't <laughs> shut him up. <laughs> I, I get a little goofy, but um, no, I, I would just definitely echo all that, but for sure. Uh, just don't believe the lie. Quit believing yeah. the lie, you know, and that's really it, you know, um, whether it's through TV or, or somebody that's important that has spoken some lie over you, mm -hmm. um, just realize that, um, you know, a while back, and I, I said it earlier tonight, um, somebody, my stepdad actually told me what one person can do, another person can do. Mm -hmm. And and I remember when he told me that, um, and, and he was a lot like you, Tag, uh, he, he was CEO and, and uh, president of uh, North American Van Lines, Burlington North Santa Fe Railroad. And, and uh, he was, he was so connected that uh, at 50 years old, uh, he had a massive heart attack, became incapacitated. And, and so um, that to me was, again, he, he was, he was, he was a really good battery for the system. Mm -hmm. um, and, I like you it. know, and, and I, I don't, you know, to me, it, it you know, be that for your family, be that for your community, those people that are around you and not somebody that doesn't know your name. Like Billy says, like Hollister, you know, like why would, why would. What's Amber Crombie and Fitch ever done for me? Nothing. <laughs> Listen, y'all. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, he's speaking truth there. He is. He speaking is. Speaking truth. And so. it's, it's stuff like that. But um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. But B, you have anything you'd like to add? 
Um, no, I think you guys are doing wonderful. I thank you, B. I I look at your garden and I'm just like, how <laughs> in the world do they do that? I mean, well, thank you, you know, thank you, B. That's nice. We growing up, we had a hose and we would, you know, play in the yard with the hose yep. and the trash yep. can, of course, you know, because somebody had to clean it, but. Right. <laughs> and and we have patches of of dead looking grass but mm -hmm. you guys are doing great you know Thanks. with what you have yeah yeah, yeah. thank you yeah, well, i think my final words would be um to everybody watching out there that listen if you want to support people who have taken a stand and who are pushing out of the system get over to american roots farm and subscribe and i'm, I'm asking you this as a personal favor and if we do this for each other the entire place will grow and we can slowly break those chains and get away from the machine. So right. go do it. Go do it right now. Don't wait until tomorrow because you're going to forget. Don't wait. Just go do it. Go do it right now. Right. American Roots Farm. Um, and then my personal notes to you, Jess, and then also to you, Joe, to Jess, yes. to you, I prefer my cinnamon rolls with walnuts and raisins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> She's got a memory like a steel trap. Yep. <laughs> And Joe, it's, uh, I can't tell you how great it is, you know, to meet you finally. And um, I really love the hat. Okay. And um, I think it's a fabulous message. And it made